Well, good evening. Good to see you all out there. You know, I, I got ready to come tonight, and I realized that this morning I forgot to wear my Christmas stuff. I only have a certain number of Sundays I can do that, so complete Christmas tie and Christmas socks. Uh, if you're curious, you can look me up afterwards. I'll show them off to you. I'm not going to do it now because <clears throat> we're on YouTube, and they would ban us for sure. I'm like, that's just that's just a given, all right? But, but Gary, what are you doing? Gary's over going, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Ah, good evening, good to see you, great to see smiles on your faces, do me a favor, it is Christmas and we're going to sing some Christmas music, join me as we stand, stand and join me as we sing, joyful, joyful, we adore thee, alright, here we go, joyful, joyful. Oh. 
Amen. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Ruskin. We're glad you're here this evening. Uh, in Acts chapter 11, um, the Bible says in verse number 9, the vo- But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, ca- that call not thou common. And we know the story there. Many of us know that, that story there. God's about to bring the gospel to the church age, which is going to be a, a primarily a Gentile congregation. Uh, the Jews very much believe the Gentiles um, were unclean, and they, they should not receive the gospel because of that. And uh, God brings this dream, this vision to Peter, and Peter sees uh, the, kind of this blanket come down full of animals that the Levitical law said was unlawful to eat because they were unclean. And God says, eat them. Peter says, I've never done that before, and I will not do that. I will not eat that which is unclean. And God says, Peter, quit calling something I have cleansed unclean. You say, how does that apply to us today? Let me ask you this. What sin is in your life that brings guilt into your heart, that makes you feel guilty, that makes you feel dirty, that makes you feel unclean? Let me tell you, there's two things I want to give you today. Number one, if you have not brought it to the, to the cross of Calvary, do so today. Bring it to Christ. Ask for his forgiveness. Repent of your sin. Turn from it. And ask him to forgive you, and God will cleanse that. You say, well, I've done that. Well, that's where the second bit of advice is. If you still feel dirty after God has cleansed you, stop telling God that what he has cleansed is unclean. Accept his forgiveness. Accept the the fact that God has covered it with the blood of Jesus Christ. And quit living in shame. Trust that what God has cleansed is no longer unclean. Father, we thank you so much for the truth of your word. I pray now that you would help us, Lord, today. Father, maybe there's sin in in some of our hearts, Lord. Maybe there's some things that we need to repent of today, Lord, and bring to you and allow you to cleanse in our hearts, Lord. And then there's some things that, that, that maybe you have done in our lives, Lord, and you have cleansed us and forgiven us. Lord, help us to trust in your forgiveness, trust in your cleansing, and no longer live with guilt and with shame and with with just a dirty feeling, Lord, but understand that you have cleansed us today, Father. Thank you for your salvation, we pray. Be with the service today, be with our pastor as he preaches, and just pour your spirit upon us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have the men come forward. If you're here for the first time with us, we are so thankful that you are here. Would you just kind of get the attention of one of these men coming down, and they will give you a card. On that card is a QR code, um, and uh, just an opportunity, if you're going to that QR code, it will bring you to a place that we can kind of get to know you a little better. Um, And we will also do this as well. Um, We will give to a charity of your choice. $10 Um, $10 towards that charity just for being with us this evening. We are so thankful you are here. And now we're going to have the mission letter uh, read to us. Thank you, Brother Allen, for your opening. I really love how Brother Allen brings a little, little piece of scripture. You know, I was thinking about it's almost like an appetizer before the main meal, like those Olive Garden breadsticks, which I love, and it's a great marker of things to come. Well, let's go ahead and move to our missionary letter. And uh, Pastor makes up the missionary schedule ahead of time and gives it to us and gives us the letters. And somehow, some way, I got my father in law. <laughs> so today's missionary focus is uh, Brother my, John Yingling. He is the president of Baptist International Outreach, and he's supported very much the same way that we support missionaries. He has a group of supporting churches. And another small comment about this. This is the first, not this letter particularly, but this was the first missionary letter that I was hand-delivered by the missionary. He actually finished this while we were up there in Tennessee. So he goes ahead and gives us a couple things here. The theme of his letter is thankfulness. He says, we thank the Lord for blessing our fall, our biofall meeting. One of the highlights of the meeting this year was the approval of a new missionary family and a single a new single missionary. Please pray for Zachary and Sarah Smith. They are headed to the the, uh, Samoan Islands. Pray also for Timothy Pozo. He is from Peru and is the latest addition to the Go Deaf missions team there. He also got the chance to travel down kind of toward our way a little bit up the coast to Pensacola and was able to uh, make some connections at their missions conference as well as speak to the freshman class and teach in their Sunday school. 
Um, he also is recovering from sinus surgery. He, I can attest that he is doing better, but he does ask that we pray for him as he continues to recover, um, as he's still dealing with some of the uh, after effects of that sinus surgery. He also writes about his upcoming trip to the Philippines in January, um, which will be an opportunity to connect with Amber Yingling in the Philippines from January 8th to the 29th, 2024. Uh, while I am there, Amber and I plan to travel to Batangas, Pampanga, Negros Oriental, and Mindanao in order to minister to all of our biomissionaries and ministries there in the Philippines. Uh, lastly, he does thank the Lord for us. Uh, we are blessed with wonderful partners. Thank you for your love, for your prayers, and for your faithful financial support. Let's go ahead and lift Brother Yingling up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of John Yingling and uh, the ministry of Bio, Lord, being able to help equip as well as care for the missionaries uh, throughout that organization. I pray that you would continue to bless the Yingling family and encourage them as uh, they recover. As, and thank you for the addition of two new missionaries. I pray that you would be with them as they minister in their prospective fields. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Josh mentioned uh, appetizers before the main course. Uh, this morning, we gave you a little appetizer, a little uh, preview of our katata that will be next Sunday night. Uh, there it is right there, Rhapsody in Bluegrass. Uh, that's a play on Rhapsody in Blue, which is actually a title of a piano concerto. Uh, Rhapsody in Bluegrass is a cantata that presents the story of Jesus' birth, a story that we all know very well, but people who write cantatas find unique and different ways to present that story. Uh, so our first one this was this morning. Our second preview is tonight, and it's called Mary Went a Riding.
So that's appetizer number two from our cantata. We have one more preview to give you next week, and we'll do that next Sunday morning. Uh, before we leave tonight, let me tell you, that was an appetizer, but it wasn't complete. There are two things missing from what you just heard, and that was on purpose. We want you to come back next Sunday night to hear how that sounds when we add in the other two elements that were left off. That song was great just the way it is, but it's even better It'll be even better next Sunday night. Next Sunday will be extra musical both in the morning and in the evening. We have our children's presentation in the morning worship service, our adult presentation in the evening worship service. Uh, so invite your family, invite your friends, your next door neighbors, your across the street neighbors, your upstairs neighbors. Uh, you know, post on Facebook what you're going to do next Sunday and tell people where, to, where they can do it too and come and join us. Uh, we, w we would just love to have a full con congregation for our presentation from the children and the adults. Well, right now we're going to have a time of fellowship. Choir's going to come down to join you. So go ahead and stand and shake hands. We'll sing some more together in just a moment.
tricked me. I was waiting for the, that's the last verse signal. He didn't give it to me. Can't trust him. <laughs> he didn't know him talk about him, does he? I could, I could keep talking about him and he would not even know. Got it now. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to meet together, sing praises to you, hear from your word, learn about you. There is nothing better to learn about than you. And there is no book better to study than the one that you put together and you wrote for us. We thank you for the word of God. Help us as we learn it. Help us to know the salvation story so well that we can share it with others. In Christ's name, amen. Sweet little Jesus boy Made you be born in a manger Take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We could see. Didn't know who you was. Long time ago. Am I on? I did not bother to check. I think I am on. You can turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 29. We are not going to read a text. My habit is to take a passage of Scripture, then exegete that text, but not tonight. This is one of maybe two or three times in 40-some years that I have spoken and not taken a text and read the text. That does not, does not mean I'm not going to be teaching the Scripture it means I'm going to be taken from pieces, and uh, the concept is this. A couple Sunday mornings ago, we looked at the history of Israel as given from the meetings of the names of the 12 sons of Jacob. 
We took the 12 sons of Jacob as a prequel to the story of Israel in four parts. There are four divisions of Israel's history. There was Israel in Egypt, Israel in the wilderness, Israel in the land of promise, and Israel in the kingdom. And each time period is presented through the names of the sons of Jacob. The names of those, those 12 sons of Jacob are on the screen not only previews the history of Israel, they also give a preview of the life and work of the Savior and believers. The Savior would come from the ancestral line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob's number four son, Judah, who became the leader of the royal tribe. The highlights of our redemption are presented in the New Testament, but they are also seen in types and shadows, in feasts and holy days, and even in the names of the sons of Jacob. The Word of God is so complex that you can study things in great depth. Others would miss it, and you can find things in the Word of God that God put in there, and it all works together. This book can be studied by someone who can barely read, and it can be studied by someone with advanced degrees. A genius can study this book, and both will come away having learned something incredible, important. So, chapter 29, verse 32. Take Jacob's first son, his name Reuben. And the name Reuben and the person Reuben refers to the person of redemption. Reuben means see a son. And Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God the Father, according to John 3.16. He is the person of redemption. Leah, the mother of this boy, saw Reuben as her redemption from the hatred of her husband, a man whom she had sinned against. And she thought that having a son would bring forgiveness to her. Christ is our redemption from the curse of sin. Every one of us is a sinner. In Reuben's name is a preview of the Son of God found in the New Testament. The Son of God is the one and only who offers us redemption and forgiveness from our sins. What a great name to start a family with. The name of the second son is Simeon. And it reminds us of the preaching of redemption. Simon means hearing. Hearing is an essential for redemption, and an essential for hearing is preaching. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So we're given the person of redemption. Then we're told of the preaching of redemption. Levi, the third son, chapter 29 and verse 34, relates to the peace of redemption. The name Levi means joined or attached. It pictures the fact that when we are saved, we are joined unto Christ. As unsaved individuals, all of us are alienated from the life of God, Ephesians 4, 8. But salvation ends the alienation. And now those in Christ, those who are believers, are joined unto the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. In John chapter 15, Jesus told us that we are joined unto him like a plant. I am the vine, ye are the branch. Without me, you can do nothing. That includes live. In Ephesians 5, we're given the illustration of a husband and wife. Those in the church are like a bride, and they are joined unto Christ, who would be like the husband. So we have a bride and a husband. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, clearly we are presented the peace of redemption. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And without him, you do not have peace. You will not have peace. Judah, the fourth son, all of these first four, by the way, were born of Leah, offers a report of the praise of the redeemed because the name Judah means praise. Salvation produces praise in the life of those who receive it. Paul wrote in Ephesians 1.12 that the end of our salvation is 
that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Peter wrote about it too, 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So far, each of the four names speak of Jesus Christ. The name Dan recounts the pardon of the redeemed. The name Dan means judge. At our salvation, God judges us as sinners and forgives us of our sin through the sacrifice and work of Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through salvation, the guilty are cleared, sinners are acquitted, souls are pardoned. With sins forgiven, we are judged righteous through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Once we have been forgiven by the blood of Christ, when God looks at us, he does no longer see our sin. He sees what the result of being saved is, that we have been saved from sin and cleansed from our sins. Now, those whose sins are not judged, not forgiven by the blood of the Lamb of God, but by Jesus Christ as Savior, will also be judged. They will be judged at the great white throne of judgment. Revelation chapter 20 details it. All humanity with sins unforgiven will be judged. And since all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all without Christ will be judged guilty of sin, and that sin will be paid for in their eternity. So the goal of the Bible and the goal of God and the goal of the church and the goal of the Word of God is that as many as possible be both judged guilty and forgiven before being judged guilty after forgiveness is no longer available. The job of the church is to preach the gospel to all creatures, that people may come to the Savior and will not have to be judged guilty before God. The, the, let's see, uh, that's got that one was part of, I lost my place here, so I, now we go to Naphtali. Chapter 30, and verse, verse 8 gives us his name. It reminds us of the pathway of the redeemed. The, the name Naphtala means wrestling. It speaks of conflict and struggle. When a person gets saved, the struggle is not over. Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I have met folk who are very disappointed that after they accepted Christ as Savior, they still have problems. You will. All who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to have problems. It's the path that we travel on. Gad, in chapter 30 and verse 11, relates to the population of the redeemed. The name Gad translates as a troop of, cometh. And it refers to the arrival of help for those who were in need. Every human being needs to know that help for our sin problem has arrived in Jesus Christ. Believers are blessed by the Lord's help, his remedy for our sin problem. The Lord has blessed me in a lot of ways. I, I cannot thank the Lord enough for the nation I grew up in and the era that I was born in, which is in the middle of the 20th century. When I was a child, I heard about Christ and Christianity lots. I heard about it in my home from my parents. I heard about Christ and Christianity in the churches that we attended. And until I was on my own, we attended two different churches, one from zero to 13. By the way, I was in church before I was a week old. My mother just stuck me in that nursery all those germs attacked me, and somehow I survived. Uh, I learned about Jesus Christ from my teachers. I remember having teachers who at lunch would say, boys and girls, before we have lunch, let's pray. Mrs. McIntosh, third grade. Mrs. Boyce, fourth grade. 
about that time, a Supreme Court ruling came down, and all of a sudden, our country was forced to change. I miss the country I was born in. I was getting a haircut a few weeks ago. My barber is a Ruskin native. He is floored all the way. You call him a cracker, he sticks his chest out. Yeah. And I said, Steve, what do you think about what's going on with our traffic? He said, I love Ruskin. He said, I've lived here my entire life. He said, I hate what our county has done to our little community, but there's nothing that can be done about it. It is gone. I fear that for my nation. I fear that my nation is on the, the verge of simply being gone forever. I also believe that there are a lot of people who call themselves Christians are going to stand before God one day and give answer for how you voted. Some of us fought against communism. We, we, we vote for it now. We know good and well that God loves life and that little babies are created in the image of God and we vote for those who would kill the image of God and we think that God won't hold us accountable. I think you're kidding yourself. There's a reason why in the book of Revelation there are tears wiped from the eyes of the saints early on and tears wiped from the saints later on. Those tears in the eyes of the saints on the earlier on are being wiped from our eyes because of the judgment seat of Christ where we answer to God for what we have done. The tears that are wiped away from our eyes later in the book are a result of the great white throne judgment where we witness people go to hell, to the lake of fire. And the tears will flow and only God himself will be able to stop them. I miss my country. I love the United States of America. Asher, chapter 30, verse 13, relays the pleasure of the redeemed. One of the meanings of the name Asher is happy. Salvation brings joy to us. It brings deep, abiding, eternal joy. The apostle Peter referred to it in 1 Peter 1.8. Believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, which is the middle verse of the bottom ones there on the screen, reminds us that the pleasures of sin last only for a short while, and they are not satisfying. But the joy of the Lord lasts for all of our life on earth and throughout all eternity. It doesn't mean you don't have problems. It doesn't mean you don't have sadness. It doesn't mean you're not discouraged or de even depressed. But there's a deep abiding joy that comes to, in your heart with knowing Jesus Christ. Issachar, chapter 30, verse 18, refers to the position of the redeemed. Issachar means higher. It speaks of service and serving. His name previews, previews the position of the person who is saved. We are not saved to sit around and do nothing. We are saved to serve the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? We are saved, and when we are saved, we are turned to God from idols to serve. 1 Thessalonians 1, 9. What are you doing to serve the Lord? What, what, there ought to be coming just stuff flooding through your mind. How about the progress of the redeemed? Getting near the end. Joseph. The name Joseph means adding. It reminds us that we are to be growing in our faith. 2 Peter chapter 2, 1, 5, the apostle wrote to add to your faith virtue. 2 Peter 1, 5. Good works and good living are right additions to our faith. James went so far as to tell us that when we add works to our faith, it is proof of our faith. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by my works. The last two things are about the same man. His name is Benoni. See, I don't remember having a Benoni. It was not, that's not the name of the tribe. That was his first name. The price of redemption, Benoni. It's the first name given to the 12th son of Jacob. It was given to him by his mother, Rachel, with her dying breath. 
as it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, she called his name Benoni, and Benoni means son of my sorrow. In Isaiah 53, 3, the Redeemer is called a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I love the old hymn, Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God to claim. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a Savior. In Matthew chapter 26, 38, Jesus said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And that sorrow ended when the price of redemption was fully paid at his death. And then at his resurrection, it was indeed a great price he paid. He was willing to do it all to please his Father and to save us. Jacob listened to his wife give that last son, that 12th son, the name Benoni, son of my sorrows. And he watched his wife die. And then he said, we're not calling the boy Benoni. We'll call him Benjamin. And that name stuck. Son of my right hand, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God the Father, has taken his place at the right hand of the Son of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22. He is gone into heaven. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Actually, 12 tribes, 12 sons, 13 names, and all of them refer to some aspect of our Savior or some aspect of the Christian life. You, do you understand that when God planned for the nation of Israel, although he told little, little of it to the, to the world, he also planned for the church. He planned for Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation. This is an amazing book. The more you study it, the more you'll love it. The more you'll learn of it, the more you'll appreciate it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the man who gave me this outline. It's beyond my ability to think these things through the way he did. I thank you for the idea of it, for the help that he gave. And I thank you for the word of God and for my Savior and for his gift of eternal life and for everything else he's given me as well. I pray you'd speak to our hearts in Christ's name. Amen. If you stand with us, Jim's going to sing one verse. We'll sing one after that, and we'll be done. One verse of solo, one verse of congregation.
We've got someone scheduled to pray for us tonight, and I don't see him. You know what? I know where he's at because I heard about it, that he was hunting and actually got a deer this morning. I think it was this morning. He and I are going to have a talk. He's either going to give me some deer steak or I'm going to have to tell God what he has done. (laughs) Heavenly Father, bless us now. Keep us safe on the way home. Thank you for all these folks who come out tonight. Bless the choirs they practice. We pray your blessings upon the children's presentation next Sunday morning and the choir next Sunday night. In Christ's name, amen.